Brooklyn Independent Television. What is fever? That may sound like an obvious question, but a lot of people don't really understand what a fever signifies. When a temperature can be treated at home or when it means get help now. Fever also means different things for children and adults, and it should be handled differently in each case. Joining me to shed some light on all this body heat is Dr. Michael Lucchese, Chief Medical Officer of the Downstate Medical Center Hospitals. Dr. Lucchese, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Let's start with a definition. What's a fever? The medical definition of a fever is a temperature of 100.4 Fahrenheit or 38 degrees centigrade. So is that the same for everybody? Yes, that really is the same for every. Some people run a little bit warmer, and it depends on your metabolism. It depends on medications they might be taking, and it depends on their level of activity at that particular time. So that since everybody's temperature is 100.4, after 100.4 is a fever, is that the same for children and adults? Children have a much higher uh, swing of temperatures, so children tend to um, get fevers quicker, but for the children it's the same medical definition of 100.4 degrees Fahrenheit, yes. You know, sometimes people come into the emergency room, and I'm sure you've seen a lot of them, and they say, my temperature is always 96, I run a low temperature, and when I have a, uh, the thermometer says 99, that means I have a fever. How many times have you seen that? I've seen that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but in fact, they don't have a fever if it's 99. That's very true, yes. Okay. One other thing about the range, what about different times of day? Is the, temp the body temperature different at different times of day? Yes, the body temperature changes um, during particular times of day. People tend to run a few percentages of a degree higher in the evening, and it also depends on your activity level. Sure. When you sleep at night, your body temperature goes down a little bit because your metabolism goes down. If you're active, especially if you're active outside in ambient warm temperature, your body temperature could go up slightly. Now, the, when you see a um, person with a temperature, we're deciding now that it's over 100.4, um, what's, what's the first consideration? Well, uh, the, the, first, the first thing is, and again, um, what I would try to tell people is how you take the temperature is extremely important. There's oral temperatures, there's rectal temperatures, and children, they're using now uh, temperatures, tympanic membrane uh, um, uh, thermometers that'll take the uh, temperature. So they how do they, it under the arm anymore? They, they, we, we rarely do it under okay. the arm, and that's the most inaccurate way to do it. Okay, I'm dating myself, so let's not talk about that. Okay. Um, so the ear for children, uh, and, oral, and rectal. And rectal, yes. Okay. And, and if uh, the, even the ear temperature could vary significantly if there's cerumen, if there's wax that's impacted in there, that can also alter. The most accurate way is a rectal temperature. Now, who are the people who are most prone to these temperature swings um, in the population? Is it the elderly or the children, active people? Who is it? Uh, children and active people will have the, more of the temperature swings. We get, are a little bit, um, you, you'll, you'll scrutinize uh, the fever to a little bit of a greater extent in the very young and the very old. Everything in medicine is vulnerability. Very young and very old are the most vulnerable. Now, we have to address this feed a fever, starve a cold. Okay, starve a cold, feed a. I don't know which one it is. Which one is it? Yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it's been told as uh, feed a cold and starve a fever. Feed a cold and starve a fever. But for people who feed everything, does that have any significance? Does it make any difference whether or not you starve a fever? No, it does not. It does not make it a difference. It does not make a difference. What, what I think when they even say feeding, what, the real concerns about anything like that when people get ill is dehydration. So as long as people are hydrated enough, as long as the child is hydrated enough, they're drinking, they're taking in orally. That's really what's most important. Are there any absolute levels over which you say, get to the emergency room and get medical help right, in that, right now? Are there any temperature levels there, that you can say there's that? There's nothing medically that you would say, at this number, you need to come into the emergency department or you need to do something emergently. Certain people, when they do get um, a viral illness, they will run a higher temperature than others. And I'm sure that everybody knows 
anyone who has children know that one child always the slightest little cold and they'll be febrile and someone else, uh, another child in the same family will not get febrile at all. Speaking of children, what about medicating them? Do you medicate them exactly as is on the bottle um, of the over-the-counter medications? How, if you're medicating it at home, how are you guided to know what to give the child? It's usually what the bottle, uh, the bottle will say. And the biggest mistake that's done is that children grow very quickly. Yes. So I often see parents bringing their children into the emergency department and they'll say, I gave them the Tylenol and they still had the fever. How much did you give them? I gave them two teaspoons. Well, look at the bottle. Now that was the last time you gave it to them, they might have been 20%, uh, they might have a weight now of 20% higher than when it was then. So you might be underdosing. So it's important, even though it's an anxious time for the parent or the caregiver, it's still important to read the bottle and to see what they should be given at that time. You know, one of the points that I want you to get out, and I think everybody should know this by now, but we shouldn't assume, aspirin and children when they have fever. Right. Um, there are certain viral illnesses that if you take aspirin at that time, you could have um, a reaction, and it could be a slightly dangerous reaction. It is extremely rare, um, and in children we rarely use aspirin. We'll use another type of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, which is ibuprofen. Okay. And, and that's, that's fine and that's perfectly safe. Both that and acetaminophen, more commonly known as Tylenol, are both perfectly safe in fevers. But in general, just to avoid any problem, just in general, use the other two instead of aspirin. Use either the ibuprofen or the acetaminophen, yes. In older people, do you make any consideration for the level of the temperature? Because older people, of course, respond differently to so many things. Is a temperature of 101 treated differently in terms of a seriousness for an older person than in, say, a child? We usually are a little bit more concerned about older people. And when older people can have even a slight fever, they could have an alteration in their thinking pattern, alternation in their sensorium. So that's concerning. So a lot of times older people will come in and they'll have a fever and they'll be completely confused. You treat their fever and they become completely lucent again. So at that initial phase when they're confused, and that's one of the red flags with the fevers, when the thinking pattern is not, is not the way it normally should be. That's a little bit one of the concerning times. So yes, elderly people do get the, a little bit more uh, confused when they get fevers. So there's no absolute number, is what you're saying. Uh, for when to take people to the emergency room. What about duration of fever? Duration of fever, uh, there, are, there are viral illnesses that can last 24 hours and there are viral illnesses that can last five to seven days. I think that again, the fever itself is not the concerning part. It's how they're acting, is if they're eating, it's how, they're, it's how they are interacting with, uh, with the family. Those are the more important And how, issues. whether they're hydrated or not. And, and they're the very important thing. And in children, it's sometimes it's hard to say how much they drink, especially if sometimes they have colds and they're making a lot of phlegm and they swallow the phlegm and then they vomit some of that up. The most important thing in children is to is follow their urine output. We're going to have to leave it at that, Dr. Lucchese. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much for having me. Become a fan on Facebook, like Brooklyn Independent Television.